Chicago land, hey, let's start the conversation. Upset, complaint, opinion, call me. Oh, no, that didn't just happen. Gerard McClendon Live starts now. Yes, yes, Gerard McClendon Live, it starts right now. Hey, I want to welcome you to Gerard McClendon Live, a big CLTV hello to our new viewers on RC. And we really appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in to Gerard McClendon Live. On this show, we give you provocative commentary on Chicago issues of the day. You know, Falcon Heaney, the Colorado six-year-old who thought he was in a balloon, is alive and well, found in the attic. Thank God for this his safety. Later in the show, we're going to have actress and comedian Kim Coles. She's going to join us. But now, how can we stop recidivism in communities? Repeat offenders are everyone's business because the lack of rehabilitation or employment may result in negative activities affecting us all. Natasha Howlett's funeral was today. It marks the effects of continued violence in Chicago, but does it have to perpetuate? You know you can give me a call on this show, 877-358-CLTV. 877-358-CLTV, Gerard McClendon Live. We give you the First Amendment right here. How many talk show hosts give you their phone number? You know, I'm really upset today because Chicago continuously has 500 caskets per year. 500 murders plus. This is utterly ridiculous. Are we going to continue to stand for this? Are we going to continue to have preachers marching, mothers crying? You got to be kidding me. Make the phone call, 877-358-CLTV. Author of A Breed Apart joins us from the Tribune Tower to discuss the cycle of crime in our beloved city. Victor, welcome to Gerard McClendon Live, my friend. Victor hey, Woods. Hey, Gerard, how are you? Hey, what's up, Victor? You know what, Victor? Recidivism, man, the act of repeating or returning to behaviors that may not be so desirable, man. How can we get offenders to stop? Well, you, you know, one of the things is when we talk about recidivism is, is we've got to put the right programs in a prison uh, to, to get people ready to reenter, and we have not done that. We have not gotten uh, the right programs in the prison system yet. And, and until we do that, because it's not about uh, preparing yourself when you get out. Mm. It's about preparing yourself while you're in prison. You know, I was in prison twice. And the first time, you know, college, you, you, you know, prisons become a college for criminal activity. And so um, you've got to want to rehabilitate yourself. The second time when I was in federal prison, I took it upon myself yeah. to say, hey, I don't want to be in this place and let me do all the things that would be necessary so I can come out and, and contribute to society. Oh, okay, in a wait, wait, wait. Way. stop right there, Victor. Stop right there because you said it's mm -hmm. almost too late to prepare mm -hmm. once you're getting out your day of release well, from it prison. Too, it is you too should, late to prepare once you, you, you when, be, when you're released. You should be preparing while you're <laughs> in the prison. Listen, pen? let me tell you something. The day you get arrested and the day you get out of the county jail, and they send you to the uh, one of the prisons anywhere in this country, that first day in prison is the day that you need to begin the, the, the daunting task of trying to rehabilitate yourself so when you get out, you can stay out, period. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about a breed apart, journey to redemption. Sure. Describe your criminal history, man, because you know when people see you on Gerard McClendon Live, sure. you know they see you all knotted up, the suits on, you're looking good. But well, tell say, us I about what, what, what went down with you, man. What went down? Well, listen, you, you know I was a classic example of using your potential in the, in the wrong way. You know, as a juvenile, as a young person, I had an armed robbery ring mm. with uh, six other people with walkie-talkies, police scanners, and what. And, uh, okay, wait, 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 okay, wait, wait, we, we want to take our time today. So the first offense was armed robbery. It was a, yeah, well, to put context to it, it was an armed robbery ring that involved six people. We had police scanners, walkie-talkies, and binoculars. It's actually the biggest armed robbery ring in the history of Illinois. And 60 detectives from uh, Buffalo Grove and other surrounding suburbs mm. put a task force together to arrest me, and then I ended up in state prison for that. What was the second offense? And then the second offense was a, um, a $40 million uh, conspiracy for making uh, Visa gold cards. Okay, whoa, 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 stop. Because every time I tell people this story, Victor, sure. they trip. They're like, how could Victor Woods put together a $40 million mm. scheme concerning credit cards. What did you do, man? How did you do this? Well, you know, first of all, as you know, I, I've written a book, and so I don't want to give it all away. You know, yeah. people can go to the bookstore if, if they're really interested, and, and they are making a movie about me, so it's, it'll be in the theaters hopefully soon. But the, the, the thing I did was, you know, I had the blank cards that I got through an interstate uh, shipment, oh. and I was able to then get an inside source at Visa headquarters, mm. and then from there, 
um, I was able to, you know, get other people together in the conspiracy, and then we went out and, and did various things with those cards that got the attention of the United States Secret Service. Wow. And then I was uh, arrested, and uh, the United States government said, hey, Victor, if you're willing to uh, give us your inside source at Visa headquarters and names of everybody involved, Ooh. then we'll give you uh, five years probation. So they gave you a little bit of plea bargain there. Well, I didn't take that. I have 14 friends that did take probation, and I was the only one that went to federal prison. So I went to maximum security federal prison for six and a half years. Okay, and why, my... and why didn't you take it? Well, l listen, you know, w one of the things that, that I don't agree with, you know, it, my father used to tell me you know, back in the day when they used to have a show called Beretta, and they used mm -hmm. to say, if you can't do the, 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 the time, don't do the crime. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I did those things, and when the government offered me five years probation and said, hey, you can just go free, just tell on people, I didn't think that was the appropriate thing to do. Yeah. And I think there's too much of that going on now in our streets. If you do something and you're man enough to do it, you need to be man enough to take responsibility for your actions. And I'm not saying that my behavior or the crimes I committed were right, but I feel very comfortable in what I did. I never wanted someone to go up to any of my daughters and say, hey, your daddy put my daddy in prison. Yeah. So I decided to do those six and a half years. Yeah, hey, Victor, hold tight, man. Hey, a life of crime crime, gangs, guns, urban terrorism, or just the population of lost souls crying out for love and attention. Victor Woods joins us discussing how not to be a repeat offender. Call me, 877-358-CLTV. Gerard McClendon Live, back in two. Thanks, Jerry. You don't need a search warrant to go through your kid's room to look in their book bag and make sure there's no weapon in that house. If you find a weapon, call the police department. We'll come get it. We'll take it out of the house. No questions asked. Welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. That's your superintendent of Chicago Police, Jody Weiss. Is it possible to reduce violent crime in Chicago? What about reducing the recidivism rate? Call me, 877-358-CLTV. Victor Woods joins me for his passionate work to save lives and give options. Victor, I want to give you some mad love here, man. Thank you. I was I on it. I was on YouTube earlier, man, yes. and some people saw you. They saw the show that you were on last time. Chicago Fit says, thanks for writing the book, Victor. My son and I enjoyed the work very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Thank SP you. says, Victor Woods, a real positive brother, man. So you're getting a lot of love out there. You know, Thank Victor, you. Let's, talk, let's talk about all Gale Gardens, man. Let's talk about Finger, The Bill, people just getting shot, beat up at random. You know, how do we change this cycle, man? Can, is it emotional? Is it spiritual? Come on now. Well, I, I think one of the things that we have to recognize in this city and around the country, and we haven't, we talk about Finger, we talk about Argyle Gardens, we talk about the inner city. That's part of the community. Uh, but the prison system, Cook County Jail, mm. the juvenile detention center, and all the prisons that surround the city of Chicago, Stateville, Pontiac, Menard, Danville, Dixon, Graham, mm. um, uh, Shawnee, they all feed into the community. And so in order to really deal with this problem, it's bigger than Finger High School. It's bigger than that yes. neighborhood. Many of of their parents are locked up in prison. Maybe many of their brothers and cousins are locked up in prison. And so uh, the, the prison piece of this, the, the Department of Corrections plays a pivotal role in trying to uh, restore these communities to yeah. peace. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting that you would say that too because we had a Dr. Rico Gutstein on the show yesterday and he said we just can't look at the children who are behaving in these these, in these particular negative activities. We have to look at what may be causing these things. And then after the child perpetrates a crime or the adult perpetrates this crime, we have to figure out not necessarily why, but how not to get them to do it again. Well, Victor, Victor, you're, come on, man, you're the classic what? example. You could have easily gotten out of the pen and then gone back to a life of crime. Well, you chose well, not to. Well, Gerard, what? I did do that. The first time I got out of prison, I did exactly that. I got but back out and went back to the, a life of crime. But Victor, the second time, come on, man. Well, the, the, the issue is, look, I had a lot of help. One of the things is, you know, you've got to help people. And there mm. were people who, you know, Bernie Mac supported me, Shaka Khan supported mm. me, the vice president of Sony Music, you've supported me. There's a lot of people. Simon & Schuster supported me. So there's a lot of people that helped me. So, you know, there's a catharsis of people that, yeah. that, looked, that went on the limb for me to, to help me and there's a lot of young people that need that same kind of attention and help and let me really just emphasize something let's stop labeling these children you know you can't tell the difference between a young 
um, student at Finger or Roberson or Julian, the difference between him and a gang, uh, so-called gang member. These kids are not gang bangers, and let's not allow people to label these young black yeah. boys between the ages of 14 and 18 and call them gang bangers, and then allow the police to dress up like ninjas, go into these neighborhoods, Whoa. and arrest these children like they're members of a terrorist group. They mm. deserve a chance. So let's this, not whoa, terrorize whoa, whoa, so, children so, that so have already Victor, been terrorized. So, Victor, they're not urban terrorists, man. They're no, terrorizing no, the no, neighborhood. They're, no, they're not urban terrorists. They are young people who have been neglected, rejected, who have been taken advantage of, who we do not care about. If you go into those neighborhoods, it's obvious that we don't care as a city about the south and west side of Chicago. Yeah. Let's not uh, disrespect those young people without giving them chance. They've lost hope. Uh, the only time we've given them any real attention now is since we caught a, a horrible act on YouTube. Had that murder not been caught on national oh. television, oh. we wouldn't be giving it the attention now. Yep. This is a 20-year-old, 20 20-year 20 problem <laughs> that we have in this city that cannot be taken care of overnight. Yeah. Let's give programs a chance to work because we haven't taken the South and West Side seriously. Victor, recidivism, man. Let's talk about the felon. Let's talk about the convicted felon. Something that I always quote, Victor, is the 13th Amendment. And a lot of people, they think I'm misquoting it. The bottom line is with the 13th Amendment, slavery has been abolished except for whom? The convicted felon. Let's talk about the felon, man, because how can a felon get a job once they're released, man? I mean, the minute that you check that little box saying felon you're already you already got a bullseye on you man well first of all if you have people um getting out of prison and they don't have any, uh, any hope they don't have a job mm -hmm. they haven't been properly prepared i mean when we send someone to the army we just don't drop them off in afghanistan we just don't drop them off in iraq mm -hmm. they go through boot camp uh, they go through training before we send them there. So if these people haven't been properly trained and we send them home, how are they going to get a job? And then if they can't get a job, then they're going to commit crime again. And that's yeah. how they go back to prison. The prison pipeline, they go back because they're not prepared for anything. And incidentally, let's, let's keep it real here, Gerard. Mm -hmm. Most people do not want to give someone a second chance nope. anyway. Nope. Once someone has gotten out of prison, we don't really want that person working beside us in the workplace. And until we get serious about the Department of Corrections and about programming, mm -hmm. these people are going to come back into the neighborhoods unemployed, uh, undereducated, and are going to end back in the federal Oh, and state prison yeah. systems hey, across this country. Hey, Victor, hold tight, man. We're going to take some phone calls after the break. Kim Coles will be with us a little bit later, but your calls are the focus after the break. 877-358-CLTV. Can you get a job if you're a felon? Would you give a felon a job? Call me, Gerard McClendon Live. Back in two minutes. The question is, why, why, why? People have to have moral conscience. Is it enough is enough another child gets killed? Don't look the other way. Don't film it. Do something about it. Felons in the crosshairs of unemployment. Victor Woods joins us. Give me a call, 877-358-CL. TV. That's your beloved mayor, Richard Daly, making some comments. Victor, before I come back to you, man, I want to go to uh, some phone calls first. Let me go to Chuck. Chuck, thanks for calling GML. What's your comment, Chuck? Hi, Chuck. What's your comment? Yeah, my comment is when the people get out of prison and go to prison, we shouldn't turn our backs on them when they get out of prison because they still is our future and we still have to have jobs for these people. Mm. For one, I have a felony and I do work. Mm hmm. I work a full-time job. I'm not ashamed to say that God has been good to me because I put my trust in God. Yeah. And what I'm saying, we need to build programs for when they get out of prison and while they're in prison, train them to do something, give them yeah. a skill trade. Yeah. Hey, Chuck, let me ask you this, man. How did it feel when you were released from the pen? What did it feel like? Did you feel free or did you feel like you were still trapped? No, I felt free. Well, let me clarify that. I never been to the pen. I just was stuck on probation, but mm -hmm. I almost went. But yeah. 
at the same time when my probation was over, yeah. I was still out there working and doing what I had to do to maintain. Yeah. I couldn't feel, I wouldn't let myself feel trapped in the system. There we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hey, Chuck, That's thanks for the call. I appreciate you. Let That's me go to Lloyd next. Lloyd, thanks for calling Gerard McClendon Live. What's your comment, Lloyd? Yeah, um, how you doing, Gerard? Pretty good. Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah, I think that we might be looking at this the wrong way. I, I think that, the, that, that recidivism um, is systemic. I, I mean, we're not talking about the fact that one out of three black men are going to go to prison between 17 and 35. That's right. Very good. That's systemic. Okay? Yeah. We're not talking of, and, and then we look at, the, when they say, uh, I, I recently went back to college. As old as I am, I went back to college. And one of the biggest programs at my school is criminal justice, which wow. tells you that this has become an industry. It's big business. Hey, Lloyd, thanks for the call. I appreciate you. Victor Woods, the prison industrial complex. It's for real, isn't it? So, well, absolutely. You know, what, what we do now, especially most of the prisons in Illinois are six hours away from Chicago. Ooh. And what they do is they move a, you know, take bulldozers in and move a cornfield, then spend three, four hundred thousand dollars, three, three, four hundred million dollars, build a prison employ everybody that lives in that geographical area yeah. and then bring poor people from Chicago to fill the prisons, build a Walmart for the prison staff to work in, and then build a hotel for the prisoners' family members to come visit them. Here we go. And, so, and, and incidentally, those prisoners in prison are working in that prison That's from nine to five jobs and making five to ten cents an hour. Felons so, is modern felons is modern day slaves. Absolutely. You know what? Absolutely. Let me get Judy in here right quick. Judy, make your comment quick. You're on GML. What's your comment? Yes, uh, McClendon, good evening. Hello. What's the your comment? The truth will set us free, McClendon. Yes. The thing is, we don't have the truth of what's really going on. That's, That's right. right. Hey. Prisons are necessary. Yeah. They create jobs. They create revenue. Wow. It all boils down to one thing the monetary system is running everything wow right. hey judy thanks for, judy necessary. judy i gotta run judy thanks so much victor final comment man 10 seconds holler at me well, let me just say this. You know, Mayor Daley has uh, allotted a million dollars from the uh, parking meter, a little over a billion dollars we got for the parking meter mm -hmm. uh, lease. And a million dollars he's allotted to create 500 jobs in Chicago for inner city youth. That's not enough. We've got 30,000 secondary students, yeah. uh, give or take, here in Chicago. We're yeah. going to need that need jobs. Many I've had over hundreds of kids call me for jobs this summer. We're going to need about 50 to 100 million dollars of that parking meter money to really, really make an impact. Hey, I applaud Victor. Mayor Daley for trying. Yeah. But we need more help. Hey, Victor, we're going to try to get you some more help, man. Thanks for being on GML tonight. We, we appreciate you, Thank man. You. Thank Hit you. Hit me on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, CLTV.com slash GML. The First Amendment is right here. Gerard McClendon Live gives you the opportunity to call the show. Gerard McClendon Live, 773-883-3450. Gerard McClendon returns with purses and pockets. Living single actress, comedian Kim Coles. Gerard McClendon Live, back in two. Welcome back to Gerard McClendon Live. You can call the V-Line at 773-883-3450 after the show. You know, you've seen her on In Living Color, Living Single, and the new show, Pay It Off. But she's in Chicago for purses and pockets with a purpose. Comedian and humanitarian, Ms. Kim Coles. How you doing this evening, Hi Kim? Hi there. I just want to show everybody my phone. Is that not foxy? Oh, girl. Is that not hot? Your stuff is right. What? Do um, you see the little hearts? Yes. A bling bling, bling every bling. time I come around. Hey. Kim, talk to me. Explain purses and pockets. I attended one of your events over on 47th Street uh, in Bronzeville. Yeah. But tell my viewers, what is, what, what is it with this particular organization? I'll tell you all about it. So PursesAndPockets.org is the, is, the, is the website. And it's Purses and Pockets with a Purpose. And what it is, is it's an organization where we take purses, literally, and fill them with products, lotions and potions and shampoo and diapers and whatnot, and deliver them to domestic abuse shelters mm. so that when women run away, and they often run away with just their babies in tow and that's it, at least they land and they get something beautiful, a brand new purse that's their very own, and enough to sort of get them started. Shampoo, <laughs> lotions, potions, you know, just toothpaste, just you, the basics you know what, so Jim, that they're taken care of. This sounds like a very small thing. For most people, okay, yeah, Kim Coles is using her celebrity to collect purses and pocketbooks, but self-esteem is very fragile. How fragile is it, and how do people feel when they get these purses and pocketbooks? Well, your self-esteem is very fragile, and you've probably, 
You know, I haven't been in a, I, I never run away with a bunch of kids. I have been in two major uh, abusive relationships and when I walked away, I was able to walk away. But a lot of times these women are walking away and it's, it's their last hope. It's like, I, I've got to get out. I've been hurt. My children have been hurt. My life feels like it's over. I have no recourse. Let me just go to the shelter and lay my head down. And I think it's just sort of the first thing that says, you know, this is a what I call um, a ground swell or like, yes. you know, or, you know, on the ground kind of movement. It's not a big government organization saying, here comes money for you. This is like, here's yeah. a purse for you, lady. This is something nice to show that we care and to show that we're thinking about you. And there's information about community services and education for your child and help for you. You. And so it's real basic yeah. and it's real um, tangible. Now you got a huge event coming up, the first annual My Love Doesn't Hurt Magnificent Mile Walk. Yes. That's going to be this Saturday? This Saturday on the Magnificent Mile, just steps away from where I'm sitting right now. We're calling it the My Love Doesn't Hurt Walk Away. Mm. It's happening at 6 p.m. on Saturday. You can go to PursesAndPockets.org to register. It's only $10 to register. Bring a purse. We're going to have collection along the way. Wow. And we're going to take this walk along magnificent mile this beautiful uh, mile that lights up as we walk yeah and as we light up our light up our lives and walk away from abusive relationships okay I understand that people need to bring ten dollars and they can bring a modestly used purse but yes. you know what people been bringing brand new purses to you Kim isn't that wonderful so that way this lady gets a brand new purse I think it's wonderful mm. and we're gonna have collection sites along the path yeah. and uh, it's it's a beautiful thing because it's about um, just caring right now, not waiting for some, like I said, some big govern, government organization or someone yeah. to vote for something to happen. We're just making it happen. That's and it's right. only $10 to register, like I said. And, and so I'm here, I'm here in my beloved uh, part-time home of Chicago. You know, I was living here for a while, for a couple yeah. of years ago, and I fell in love with the city. Yes. And Purses and Pockets was born here while I was, while I was here. There we and go. So, Kim Coles, we appreciate you. We love you. your warm smile. We love your comedy. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. for being on Gerard McClendon Live tonight my dear. Thank you. And by the way, do people know that I have a game show called Pay It Off on BET? I just mentioned it. Hey, I just mentioned it. Hey, God bless you now. I'm going to talk about it on my blog. Gerard Thank McClendon you. Live. I Thank need you. you all to stay positive, keep your head up, and always be encouraged.